welcome to Fiber Trek. My name is Sarah. Welcome. You are most welcome to my studio space here in the North Woods of Maine. I am looking forward to catching you up on all of my travels and projects. Perhaps a few hints about what's to come in December and the turning of the year series. I am so grateful for all of the support that comes my way through my patrons who contribute financially as well as the insightful comments that you all choose to share. The season truly is turning here. We have a number of birds passing through like these hooded mergansers. And every year our mink seems to show up right around the end of November. I'm looking forward to catching up. Welcome. your eyes get some rest I'm by your side lay your head on my chest I know you've had How wonderful was it to finally be able to reconnect in person with a couple of my oldest fiber friends, Emily Fibertown and Sarah of Yarns at Yinhu. We've been getting together in a retreat kind of form for a number of years and due to the pandemic, we hadn't been. This was our first time back together again. We always like to rotate amongst our geographic locations and this time we were in Bucks County, Pennsylvania. We also like to share different techniques that we've learned and lead a little mini workshops. Sarah introduced me to this fabric quilted ornament technique and I'm looking forward to sharing it with you on the turning of the year. I attempted to bring some cyanotype opportunities to the table so we were thoroughly enjoying being together, sharing ideas, and taking in a very warm bit of November. It wasn't long before I was back in the airport attempting to knit this shawl and headed home to Maine. I admit I was quite happy to get back to some dark skies, but being with friends and participating together in the makes was a real soulful, much needed experience. If I got every word perfectly weighted on a thin piece of paper, would it make any difference? Would it change for the better? If I wrote you a poem, if I posted a letter.
so I can finally complete the end of the saga from last episode. I remember to bring all of the things that I needed to make this quilt sandwich from my parents' house to my house uh, at the beginning of November. And I really wanted to get this done because the weather was changing. As you saw, it has snowed, the ice is moving in. And I wanted this quilt sandwich finished so that if I wanted to hand quilt it, I could, or machine quilt it, I could. The one thing that I'm not sure that I did correctly is if I positioned the batting with the right side up to the flimsy, which is the top part of the quilt. I'm not really sure I care at this moment, and I'm just happy that it is in a position to either be hand quilted, which I'm still thinking about, or I can use the walking foot on my machine. I'm not really ready to do free motion quilting on it, but I do think kind of wavy lines, uneven lines would look nice and lend itself to this design. So stay tuned, we'll see where we end up. I think this will be a great project for after the holidays. And I'm glad that it's all put together and ready for the next step. Well, I have been very busy this month, not only hosting people at my house, but also traveling and visiting friends, as you can see. This did not leave a lot of time for deep dive into um, projects <clears throat> such as the quilt <laughs> and my loom, which were kind of both on my radar to kind of get started this month. Um, they kind of didn't. But I have made progress on projects that, if you're a follower of this podcast, you're already familiar with. I have a few treasures that I found along the way, and I want to talk to you a little bit about a turning of the year, or the turning of the year series, which I did last December, four weeks, four videos, and kind of highlighting just festive crafts and makes, um, and just looking to enrich the season here at the end of the year in Maine. So I'm looking forward to sharing with you a little bit about that. So I think we'll go right to the knitting. These will be, as I mentioned, familiar. I continue to persevere. I knew that I got a bit smug there in August when I finished a sweater and a shawl, um, thinking that somehow that would all just, that momentum would just carry over and shawls would be dropping off the needles, but that's not happening. I have made progress. This is the Wildwood Shawl by Melody Hoffman. Um, I am a patron and I received this uh, kind of as a beta, um, as being a part of her uh, group. And I finished section one, which is the center section. And there's kind of a tree motif. I'm not really sure if it's going to show up as well. Um, and then I have the started section two, which is more garter. I'm knitting this in the Manchalope. I talked about this yarn last episode and I am in love with it. It is, as I described, velvet spongy goodness. Um, it is two stranded on this 100 gram cheese, which is what they call them. I think that's obviously a reference to the Mancha sheep <clears throat> um, or the Manchego sheep for the cheese that they produce. And um, so it comes already uh, with two Slivers, slivers or slivers, but anyway, um, and yeah, so 100 grams, I'm knitting this on a US 9 per the recommendation, and I am getting close to the I-cord bind off. My thoughts for that are instead of binding off in the unspun uh, yarn that I would <clears throat> bind off in a lopey singles, um, you know, not holding two strands of lopey together, uh, and trying to either do a contrasting kind of deep chocolate all the way around or matching this, but I think it might be easier to work with the lopi uh, versus uh, something that is unspun. So we'll see, but that's coming. I did not take that with me on the airplane when I traveled to Pennsylvania to see friends, so it's had minimal amount of time over that kind of 
more intensive opportunity for knitting weekend. Um, I have been knitting on after school when I come home, and I've also been putting some time into this piece, which is um, the Kairuna by Ronya Hakaledo, and it is a pretty much a garter stitch center, <coughs> excuse me, and then a lace um, section. Uh, on the edge and so I continue to work that lace section. I had a really hard time looking at this lace, knitting it in the airport, so I ended up with a very good tip from my friend Sarah, pomegranate, uh, writing it down, duh, because it's all charted and I wasn't able to look at the chart, make references, um, and so, um, so I was able to do that but it did not get a lot of love. Um, and then the other thing that happened to me, so, oh, Tidal Yarns, and that's in her four ply, Patricia, and I'm knitting that on a US 6, which is two sizes up from the recommended needle gauge. <clears throat> um, the other one I, I did take, but unfortunately ran out of yarn, duh, was the J sweater by Rachel Brockman. This thing looks a mess. <laughs> um, but I've done quite a bit of work on the body. And this yarn is the Norsk Spalsau I picked up in Norway from Homegard Farm. And I would have continued to work on it, but when I was in Pennsylvania, I ran out. So I took two knitting projects and one I ran out of yarn, which would have been perfect for all of the travel knitting. I ended up spending six hours in Newark Airport, mostly, um, be, you know, because both Emily and I were flying out to make it easier to drop Sarah off. So my flight was at 10. We got dropped off at four, and uh, I did attempt to work on that lace shawl, uh, but it was a little bit laborious. I was tired and looking at charts, etc. So I think I eventually gave up and just read my book. So I picked up a few treasures on my travels, and I had some arrive. The first thing was I found this really beautiful Ramodale Jacob three ply when we were visiting Frenchtown, New Jersey, at the spinnery. And it is a three ply, which I, you know, I am partial to the three plies. Um, it is 250 yards per three and a half ounces. And as I said, it's a Ramadale Jacob three ply sport. <clears throat> I am really interested in blends and breeds right now. I've been kind of leaning into the old school, like Peace Fleece, Green Mountain Mohair, and Lopi. I, I just, I don't know. I'm looking for that <clears throat> grassroots of my knitting and if things are coming into the house or into my uh, stash, I really want it to be something unique and that I don't have and um, which offers me something, uh, a little bit new experience on my hands. So this was interesting, the Ramadale Jacob. And I picked this up, like I said, at the spinnery and these were $9 a skein. I got enough to do a sweater in this. And it's gorgeous. Um, the hand is very plush. It's got enough sturdiness on the twist though to kind of make it have a bit of tooth. So I was really psyched that Ramadale really comes through and looking forward to working with this and at least giving it a deserving home. Um, so Ramadale Jacob came home with me. When I got home, I had received from Woolen Twine out of Germany uh, three skeins. I ordered two skeins of this beautiful walnut dyed Romney Shetland four ply. I was very interested in the base and I ordered a contrasting in what she's calling ginger and I am looking at making a hap by Beatrice Perrin from the book Main Knits. So the main color would be this and there's a contrasting lace portion which I would do in this ginger. So this yarn, as I said, is a Romney Shetland, and it is 50-50. It's 350 meters per 100 grams, and it's sourced and custom spun in the UK, and it is naturally dyed. So a little bit of interesting uh, yarn and blends to come into the stash. So I'm really excited just to have a little bit of uh, new yarn to admire and think about and plan and just to be invigorated uh, for other projects, which leads me to what are those projects? 
I really want to get my spinning wheel going and spinning. I have some really beautiful fibers, which I think I could get spun up really quick. Part of the problem is the spinning wheel had had an issue. It's fixed now. I need to move it back, but I've been traveling, etc., etc. And now it's kind of the holiday season here for us. <clears throat> and I, I, got other projects and plans going on. So I really want to bring spinning into the center of my to-do list when I'm home. I've also started, as I had mentioned in the previous episode, a quilt for my niece. I'm doing the Star Pop by Ruby Star Society, and I'm using Sarah Watts Firefly, and I have Block A done. So everything is cut and I've started assembling blocks just to see how they go together. And I'm excited to get that done. Can I get it done for Christmas? I really hoping I can. Can I get my nephews done for Christmas? I really hoping I can. Does that mean I'll be doing a lot of spinning? So lots to think about, lots to do. And um, I am, as I said, preparing to do the turning of the year series. And I did this last year. I will be featuring um, a couple different crafts and cookie making, archery decorating, um, that type of piece here. And I am excited because we currently have snow. We're supposed to get more snow as well. So hopefully we'll add a little northern ambiance to the celebrations. I think that might be it for me on this edition. I am preparing for my sister-in-law and her two children to arrive, and then we are headed south to my parents for Thanksgiving. And in doing so, I need to clean, which I'm not very good at. <clears throat> so, um, And I also know that Ruby is ready to go for a romp. I hope that you're well. I am wishing you many fond blessings. I so appreciate you being here. And for those that invest financially, a big heartfelt thank you. It means a lot. It's humbling and encouraging. As I always say, it makes a big difference. I wish you all the best. I'll see you next time. Bye.